clap sucked. Let's do it one more time. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Safari Pedals Show. I'm your host, Abby. If this is your first time here, welcome to the Safari Podcast YouTube show, Zoo Thing Bandwagon. It's great to have you. Today, today, today is the start of a mini series that I am doing in the show called, well, you've seen the title, so like this isn't much of a surprise. <laughs> five mistakes and five tips. I thought it would be really cool and valuable to bring on a lineup of different people in the audio safari to give their five mistakes and five tips, five mistakes that they've learned on their audio journey so far and five tips they have for people like me who are just starting out and getting their new audio life bandwagon on. So guys please give a warm safari welcome to randy urbanski slash urbo engineering <laughs> welcome to the show hello thank you for having me well thank you so much for being on it's great to have you yeah so let's start with you uh, your audio life story who you are what you do and we'll take it from there uh well i'm randy urbanski like you said aka urbo engineering um that's a nickname that one of my mentors gave me well, over a decade ago now um his name's jason joshua he's a big shot mix engineer in the game um at the time he was partners with dave pensato so my first gig was at larrabee studios and i was lucky enough to land the assistant gig there with them and yeah that was uh that was in the fire as you might say yeah so i just took that after a few years went with the you know, kind of the natural flow is when you freelance, you'll kind of get picked up somewhere. And I started working with Tricky Stewart and The Dream, who were a production songwriter duo who were doing big records at the time. So I was lucky enough to kind of transition into that. And Jay was mixing all their records at the time. So it was kind of natural transition, I guess. And uh, then about maybe eight years ago now i went from them i just went full freelance and i've been uh chief engineering over at paramount recording studios for years as well as um just kind of specializing in vocal production on the recording side and uh mixing on most of my free time you know so that's yeah that's where it is now just pretty much the juggle so let's dive in five okay. mistakes that you have learned on your audio journey thus far five mistakes that i've learned i'll touch on a few i think of probably the main ones some i'm really seeing a lot right now i kind of was talking about it earlier might as well start there is uh the misconception that you know you kind of get finally get that call or you're in that room or you know and just kind of having them and tell you like you know i made it you know like Oh, I'm there. I'm I'm in the big rooms and thinking that, you know, the hard part's over, I guess, because really that's just step one at a new level, you know, and whether you're an artist, a songwriter, an engineer, you know, anyone, a and R, I, you know, whatever in, in the music industry, I think that, you know, you're going to go to school for it. You're going to go here. You're going to put in free hours and you're going to do this stuff. And then you're going to find that transition where it's like, oh my gosh, you know, I got hired by this studio or I got here or, or you're a rapper. You're like, oh, I got flown out to LA, you know? And then you step in that room. It's like, oh, mama, I made it type vibe. And it's really, it's like, well, hold on. Like there, you're now in the room with people that, you know, make radio records every day. You should definitely be aware that that is like, that's you're you're at a, just a new learning level at that point like you you aren't running the show that can get you in a lot of trouble like the amount of artists that'll come in that are you know especially now the new even though it's fading out but like the TikTok era and you'll get a lot of people that have the social media platform that haven't done the creative you know or the recording side really but the labels love those numbers and they'll bring these people out and they'll get in the room and it's like you got to have more thick skin for sometimes for those sessions than highly established artists who have been doing this and know the scene and you know the artists can come in and they're like you know bad energy or they're rude or they just you know they think they've done it all and it's just like 
okay, you're, you're cheating yourself. You're, whether you're the engineer, artist, or anyone, you're cheating yourself if you don't take that as a humble beginning moment, I guess. Emphasis on humble beginning. Yeah. yeah, I mean, especially like working at like a major studio if you get in, you know, is the way these studios used to run is more or less, I guess, illegal now, you know? I mean, it was just, if you get the call and you're in the room or you're allowed at the studio and you're cleaning toilets or you're getting coffee or whatever, like you're there a hundred hours a week. You're just there to be there waiting for that moment. Two years later, you end up getting the gig and you kind of work your way in, you know, like at least in the smaller studio, that's two years of venting or running, you know, and like, oh, you got the right energy. But there's a lot of studios that you can get in that have a lot of rooms and, you know, you're just a runner for a year. And then that morning you wake up and they're calling like, hey, we need someone last second right now. And you haven't actually been in the room doing that. You may think you're ready. But if you go into that room and kind of drop the ball, and there's a lot of balls to drop <laughs> in those rooms when you're dealing with, you know, the SSL consoles and patch bays. And, and let's say that session doesn't go smooth, and that's a client that books all the time, their manager is going to go to the studio manager and be like, hey, like this new cat, like was just really not on it or really slow. That's the look you have. That's now how your name is stapled there. And the manager may go to the desk and be like, hey, yeah, it didn't really work out. Like, don't call them for sessions. And now you shot yourself in the foot because you kind of got yourself into that situation that you weren't fully prepared for, I guess. It's a, it's a weird juggle, you know, like back in the day in the rooms, like you were going to find time to be in the rooms on off hours and really learning from another engineer or an assistant. Now you may find yourself getting a call or getting into the room and it's like, you don't want to say no, but you also kind of need to be aware that you're like, you can burn yourself, burn your name almost. Is that a common mistake you see with people starting out that they'll be too eager and then just like burn themselves out? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've seen it all. And, you know, especially in like the music game. Oh, you know, that's, that can kind of touch on two things, I guess, too, is uh, just thinking like, this is the way, you know, like, and even if it is in the music industry, it's not going to be the way in three years. That's a big issue I see right now. And even like, let's say, you know, eight years ago, making the, you know, the transition and freelance fully on my own, I would spend a lot of time at big studios and, you know, their staff would be there, their run staff, their assistants, or even their new engineers. And I couldn't believe how vocal they were. Oh, I did this. Oh, I can do this. So I could run circles around these guys. And the double-edged sword of it too is, so I think they'll kind of shoot that too early you know those will be in the room in the first 10 minutes and they're talking to the guys a and r like oh, i make beats too and this and that and it's like nothing would have had me kicked out of the room faster when i was coming up it is kind of a different game now and i think that like do the job you were hired to do first you know if you're going in there to like be the recording engineer and you're kind of new to the game and it's a bigger rapper like just humble yourself again just be the guy just keep up you know like you're running a you're playing a dangerous game if you think that that's your moment you know that you're gonna have to talk to this artist about like your beats or something i'm not gonna stop you your beats better be so fire you yeah. know? <laughs> as if they put you on the spot like that could change your life in one way or the, the other, other. those beats better be fire guys or uh yeah, be incredible <laughs> or uh, sounds like you'll be on the first spaceship out. Definitely. I've been on both ships, that's for sure. There, there you go. Here's another tip. Being underprepared, you know, like going into the room and having having someone walk, you know, a rapper walk in or a singer or whoever, and just like they hear something immediately and they're just like, I need to lay something down, you know? And you're the guy who doesn't have a mic set up or you're still doing this. Like, that's a bad one. Can't be too prepared. So I think... Some guys do go in a little underprepared in the room, especially nowadays. I mean, I'll go, you want to win me over, be a dope assistant. Like it used to be you walk into a room and the mic, the headphones, every single thing is perfectly set up and, you know, down to your, the way you like your coffee and this and that, you know, and now I'll walk into some of these rooms and it's just like, yeah, they kind of had it set up, but like the assistant's not even in the room. You know, or they'll just leave a piece of paper 
with their phone number. It's like, oh yeah, call me if you need me. And it's like, yo, like I'm judging the hell out of you. Cause like, not only are you lazy, but like, you don't want to be here. Like you're the runner or the assistant. Like this is where you're going to get the knowledge is being in the room. If we allow you, you should want to be here. Yeah. So that's a big mistake, not being prepared or just like being lackluster. Uh, the day I came up and, you know, especially working with like the likes of Dave Pensato and, and Jay, it's like, it's almost royalty treatment, you know, like these guys are, they're in the studio 15 hours a day. Plus they want to go get dinners. They want to do all these things. They don't. So it's really like on being on it for those guys, you know, Dave liked his chocolate milkshake from Bob's big boy at 10 PM, you know, like you just no question, make sure the runner's on it. A big reason I got the gig, Dave told me was cause I was under, I was not prepared, but when I got the call, you know, and I sat down with him, he's like, you're one of the first runners in years that, uh, every meal I had was hot. And I remember thinking at the time, kind of like, wait, like what? that's why I'm here for food runs. And then he put it this way. He's like, how am I going to trust you with an 80 channel plus console mix to print and stems for Christina Aguilera if I can't trust you to get my dinner hot? And I was like, oh, that's game right there. Yeah. Like, I get it. Just be two steps ahead, you know? Like, they got a week-long book session and you see that, like, at 8.30, you know, Cardi B's like, I, I want red licorice or whatever, you know, is like have the runner go buy a bunch, you know, and just have it be like, hey, 830 every day, just bring a bowl of red licorice. And that's going to win you more than any vocal chain that you present them. I'll, I promise you that. The way into people's heart is usually through their stomach. I find yeah, exactly. so. Uh, Especially when you're locked in a studio for, you know, 12 hours a day. I've gathered just from what we've spoken about thus far, there are lots of mistakes to make. It seems like if you're self-aware, you should be fine. Yeah, I think if you, like, learn from mistakes, you're okay. I mean, anyone in the experienced position in a studio environment, they were not hot shit from day one. You know, like, there's so much to learn. They have a lot to owe to other people to show them the way and as long as you can learn from your mistakes and you have a good attitude, you know, like, and at least half the technical skill, like you'll be all right. So let's do the five tips thing for people okay. starting out. First and foremost, I'll tell anyone like, you know, I get DMs and emails all the time from the youth just, oh, how'd you do that? How do I get in that room? Like, what do I do? The main word of advice is I tell people is unfortunately in the States, 98% of you are going to need to be in LA. You know, that's a, a big thing. Texas, Vegas, Atlanta, New York. Like there's definitely, you know, music being made there and there's scenes. It's a much tighter field. You know, I could probably name the two or three guys running each of those cities as an engineer. So even though there's an insane amount of competition in this game, you know, the music industry is as a whole, the engineer world is no different. You have to kind of be where it's at and all the music's being made in LA. And so what I tell people is I say, whatever it takes to be here, I don't care if your parents are paying your bills, you're living in your car, as long as you're here in the city and you have half the skill, meaning you have the understanding of what you're doing and half the vibe because vibe's going to be everything. The amount of people I've met that are incredibly knowledgeable on gear and I call them the tech engineers, you know, but they're also the like, mm, yeah, it's like, yeah, I'm, I know everything type thing. And it's like, that's not the person that most creatives are going to really connect to and want to spend 12 hours a day within the room they're gonna well, they'd much rather spend the time with someone that gets the culture of the music and like you know they can really just vibe with and be cool with and then on top of that you're also engineering and can hold it down even if you're not the fastest you'll adjust with them so if you got some of the skill but you got a good vibe and you're here in the city the door will open i don't know when but like well, you're, you're just a matter of handshakes away from like great opportunities, you know, in short, be in the city, study the craft, but also like, don't be an asshole. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. Humble yourself. Yeah. You'll, you'll go much farther. That's for sure. Yeah. I guess to carry off that then too, is like, you know, I feel everyone kind of hears 
the horror stories of like the sort of hours that it takes and what's expected. Wait for it. Here it comes. Unfortunately, it is true. Ah! <laughs> you know, like being here, networking and doing, you know, all the things to get you the opportunity to be in the room, you know, getting the assistant job, whatever. Sure, that got you there. But um, it's still one of those gigs that people don't understand, like the the true amount of hours that like you will have to put in. So a big tip is really, truly being aware of that going in, you know, because there's a lot of people that it's like, this is my dream, like this is what I want. And then you get in there and then it's like the reality of a hundred hour week, four hours of sleep at night and things like this, like the, it's not fun. You know, but it, it will put you to that test. Like, you know, how bad do you really want it on your come up? That's that probably will be expected of you, you know, just truly available at any hour. Be ready. Bye -bye, to friends. Yeah. <laughs> be ready to go out and get that red licorice for Cardi B. Yeah, yeah the, that extra sauce to get you in the room, you know, but it and when it does get you in the room, it's like, you know, like be prepared for it and um what i've gathered also is uh get like a starbucks card for all the coffee you'll be drinking i mean it got to the point now yeah that's that's kind of funny yeah there's some days i was i was working on a project in wyoming and we were living out there our main highlight of like three or four times a day was we bought our own like really high-end coffee in our french press and so you know that just become that moment you know one of the engineers like hey man i'm gonna go make a fresh pot you know it's like yeah let's go <laughs> i've actually learned a lot about coffee because of this i'm job. sure <laughs> when you said that i just imagined a bunch of like exhausted engineers like hunched over a console like Oh, very much so. What I like to do at the end of every episode is ask our um, guests to either, because like there was lots of advice, you can just drop anything you want to say, but just to say something to the amazing Studio Animal viewers slash Safari Audio World. I'll throw a, a, a total curveball. Being bilingual is a major plus right now, more so than it's probably ever been. I mean, I'm sure it's always helped to like be able to work with different clients, but there is so much crossover right now in the Latin world, you know, alone. I mean, you see Bad Bunny, you see how huge these people are. They've crossed over into the American pop culture and music and or K-pop. K-pop is huge right now. And some of the best stories I hear of people, you know, their favorite sessions and just how things are done are some of the people I've known that have been able to go out to Korea and like do work out there. That's a big one right now is being able to be bilingual, especially in Los Angeles, you know, like there's a lot of like Hispanic rap. And even right now I'm doing a vocal pack. And the main thing they're asking for is like male Spanish house stuff. You know, and it's like there's there's a big market for all that. I know not everyone has it, you know, has that up their sleeve or, you know, they're on Rose, you know, had, or, or is even going to have the time to, you know, Rosetta Stone it. But <laughs> that was like, in fact, the biggest curveball. I was really not expecting that, but it's it's big right now. There's I see a lot of that. I'll see calls out from labels that they the the a and r's or whatever obviously know us but they'll even just reach out and, and it's all love you know at that point like you don't want to give work away but they'll reach out you know and they're like hey like we got rosalia coming you know for a week and blah 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 you know anyone that you know could pop over that speaks spanish and i don't so someone else is getting that gig guys i would say know your chocolate milkshakes Download yourself some Rosetta Stone, you know, when you get those four hours of sleep between sessions, yeah. just like squeeze in a little Spanish lesson or two and you should be good to go. I've learned so much this episode. So thank you so much for being on the show and being a part. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. I, I'm happy to be here. I love you guys are, you know, you're doing this. You're opening the platform beyond just the plugins and so forth. You know, it's like there's a lot of dope plugins out there now and the companies are just that's it just focus on that but it's like you know when you're when i see every one of my peers have, using the bundle now and this and that it's like there's more to it than that you know it's like 
You're in the game now. Yeah. We're in the room. Sort of. Yeah, you in the definitely. Room. Yeah. 